hello 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 good morning good afternoon good evening friends how is everyone doing it's great to be back happy sunday as well hi nike you're off today get to enjoy our company love to hear it man enjoy and soak up that day off dude Bonk was definitely in here first today. It's great to see you, Bonk. I hope you're having a great day so far. We got Cookie, we got Mickey. Scat got a little time out there. <laughs> Sneaky Scat, I hope you're doing good though. Who else we got? Buttercup, Eric is excited for Mediterranean Day. That's how I feel too, dude. Every now and then it's like, I have a huge craving for Greek food or Mediterranean, whatever you wanna call it. Supra, hello. Great to have you back as well as Ginger Tea. <sighs> it's a good day, guys. It's kind of gray outside and rainy, but it's a perfect day for cooking inside. Yeah, we got some rest. Sammy had a good sleep. He went to bed before 9, 9 p.m. Yeah, like 8.30ish. And I got a good sleep as well. I actually slept until 8 a.m., which was awesome. So I'm feeling good. And yeah, after stream, we'll get some more rest. You know the dealio cookie. Hi, Spiral Being. Good morning. And yeah, so I don't know if anyone hung around in our raid yesterday, but I had so much fun. That was such a good way to end our super long marathon stream with the pulled pork. So yeah, check out that clip that I got from Anel. So she's a artist or singer on Twitch, very, very skilled, and I totally love her voice. And she even sung Don't Worry, Be Happy for me yesterday. That was the song I requested. But yeah, she went through our menu yesterday and like sung about all the things that we made. Very cool. I'll be posting that on Twitter as well later today. And yeah, welcome back, JK. Also, want to let you guys know the toffee coffee is delicious. Delicious. I'm looking happier today. Yeah, yesterday we were just both like super sleepy. I don't know what was going on. What do you guys think of getting a Nell to do Caitlyn a theme song? Yeah. Should we ask her? Should we approach her? We're thinking about asking her to maybe sing a theme song. She's legitimate. She's going down to Nashville to record some more songs in the next few weeks, I think she said. <laughs> Hello, OK time. Yeah, yes and yes again. It's a good idea. Like, what would it be about? Just like spreading the deliciousness and stuff you, like that, guys? Oh, you have to make some lyrics. I think I could come up with something for sure. I'm a good person with words and writing. Yeah, a theme song. Exactly, Eric. Sounds good. <laughs> Something that we can play on the speaker on the top of the food truck. <laughs> Here comes Cook with Kate. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be something awesome. <laughs> Yeah, rate it ourselves or give her the words. Yeah, spread the deliciousness, spread the deliciousness. It's like the ice cream truck. Exactly, Cookie, that's what I was thinking. Okay, we'll think about it then. And yes, good evening, Mish. Tonight was spaghetti and meatball night. Oh man, such a good Sunday meal. I remember many, many times in my youth and childhood, such a good Sunday dinner. Although my mom usually just did like a bolognese, a meat sauce instead of meatballs. Not a big meatball household, I suppose. Oh yes, Mish, we had a more in-depth conversation earlier this week, Sam and myself, about the whole ground meat with pasta and brown gravy. I, I think it would be good. It sounds like, well, you guys all eat Hamburger Helper, which is pretty much the same thing. And I was like, okay, you got me here. Just why, they obviously called it Hamburger Helper in North America to sell it to the masses, right? Hamburger Helper, I'm in. So yeah, brown gravy on pasta with meat, all good. <laughs> and hi, Flower, 13 months together already? What the heck? Flower's been with us for over a year now. 
I'm actually so excited that you found us, Flower. Someone that we were actually able to host, COVID friendly, and cook her in real life her menu of redemption for her 75,000 pots and pans points. So cool. I love that. I had bumbleberry pie and yogurt for breakfast. Sammy was threatening earlier to have a banoffee pie for breakfast, so it's not far off. Not far off. Yeah, I don't know why they call it hamburger helper. It does fine on its own. <laughs> Good one. Is that from a movie? Probably. Went right over my head. Okay, so I only have one recipe link today for our orzo pasta salad. It's one of my favorite things to meal prep. This is something good. Make a bunch of it on the weekend or early in the week and then you can just feed off of it for like four to five days or maybe it's just me. Oh, okay, National Lampoon's Vacation. I am so terrible with movie references, but please, yeah, don't hold back. Other people in chat will definitely understand. Okay, so full menu. This is what's going down today, friends. We pulled out another tuna loin. So this is albacore tuna that was caught up island here. And then we got the whole tunas in and I filleted them all myself. It was a while ago. The date might be on the bag, on the tuna. We'll check it out. So we'll marinate that up with some Mediterranean flavors. <laughs> Whatever that means. No, it'll be like olive oil, some oregano, lemon, all of that goodness in there. Let it sit for a bit. And then I'm going to be using a Lodge grill pan inside today. I know we do a lot of grilling, but not everyone has a grill. So I'm going to show you guys kind of the next best thing that I really enjoyed having around in like an apartment or if you're in a smaller space is using a cast iron grill pan, especially with fish I find. So we'll do that later and then we're going to serve the tuna rare and just slice it up really nice. And then I also pulled out, I had this kicking around in the freezer, is Meyer lemons that I just put with, or I think I infused olive oil. So this is olive oil that I infused with Meyer lemons. I see peppercorn and bay leaf in there. So once that's all thawed, cause I just had it in the freezer in a vacuum sealed bag, we'll be able to use our infused Meyer lemon olive oil for something on the dish, whether it's garnish or goes in the pasta salad or just with the tuna, but something very flavorful is gonna come from that. Hello Presto, hello Speed. Oh Presto, yeah, so you have a Lodge grill pan. And then the other thing I was gonna say with that is I did share our Amazon link if you wanna pick up a grill pan. I think they're only like 16 bucks online, so cheap. And the griddle pan, yeah, I have both of them. I have the one like larger one, the 12 inch, one that has thicker grill slits on it, let's say, or the grate, and then the one smaller one that's deeper. You having a good weekend so far, Speed? Okay, so that's the tuna and then our pasta salad. We'll just have to cook our orzo pasta and then cool it off and then chop up tomato, cucumber, spinach, olive. I got really, really sad. Actually, yeah, this is how I finished my night last night is I realized that we used all of the feta in-house in yesterday's roasted corn salad. So I got super sad and I'm like, I'm just going to bed. So I told Sam this morning, I'm like, Sam, there's no feta for the Greek salad. And he's like, I think we got to cancel stream. <laughs> Is that grounds for a uh, cancel? Might just be. So kind of sad there. So no feta in the salad, but we do have Kalamata olives. So at least we got that. That's the thing, Mish. It's like, that's pretty much is grounds for canceling the stream if there's no feta in the Mediterranean salad. It's against the law, literally illegal. Yeah, so far so good, Speed. I know, that's the thing, Bong. <laughs> Kalamata, you could eat a whole jar, right? Yeah, don't leave olives out. So the store right now get feta? No, that's the thing, is we don't buy feta in souk because it's so dang expensive. So we only buy it from Costco. That, that can of condensed milk yesterday, so I bought two for three bucks to save on. Five bucks for each of those yesterday. Five dollars for the can of condensed milk? Yeah, the mods are shutting it down. Pepper, hello. 
<laughs> She's like, guys, I'm here for the intro of the stream. Great stream, see you next week. That's literally how I feel. So I just had to let everyone know. Just get the disappointment over with and now we can lower our expectations for everything else. Oh, thanks, Mies. Yeah, I'll just go eat the feta in my fridge. <laughs> Hope you felt that glare. <laughs> Send it over. Send it over. Uh, what else do I got to report? Paul loved all of his food yesterday. That was the only person we heard back from. He said last night... At 9 p.m., I think he fell asleep after he ate the food because we never heard anything from like 5 to 9. He says, hey guys, everything was amazing. The pork had so much flavor. Top to bottom, a great meal. So happy I ordered two desserts. I'm thinking a morning coffee and the second jar full. Such creamy goodness and I love the corn salad too. You guys are savage this morning. Savage, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, what's feta? I've never eaten it before. Oh, phew. We you're have, you're good, TB. We have brie we can put in the salad. Yeah, I know. I was like, I have so many other cheeses, but I don't think they'll be good. Don't say brie. Please, Sam. <laughs> We've made it this far. So TB and feta is a Mediterranean cheese. And then Paul sends us this this morning. Good morning, you beautiful people. I had some leftover corn salad, so I made a breakfast hash with all of the delicious leftovers. Added the pork, bacon, eggs, and cheese to top it all off. And that's that wonderful, delicious looking mess. I was like, I love that, Paul. <laughs> and then I gotta read this. Just read it through and then explain what just happened. For what? Just read it. Okay. Like, read it out loud? No, read it in your head okay. first, and then you'll understand what just happened. Oh, cool. Guys, we get our own little section, let's say. So our apron maker, Search and Rescue Denim, if we send him a bunch of photos and stuff of us, of all of our different aprons, he will give us our own dedicated page on the site and give us as much info and traction as we need. And then whenever we need new aprons, he says he'll send us them. What? He'll be a master of Vesner. Yeah, so uh, we just got a level up for our ambassadorship. And yes, so Will has shared with us 15% off code for anyone that does want to order off the site. And it's not just aprons, guys. There's like bleach proof towels on there. He does custom like vests and stuff. If you guys ride motorbikes, all good things and it's all handmade. So yeah, go check it out. I'm excited. That's really cool. And hi Greek, very fitting that you pop in today. But I'm also terrified. Good thing we just had the feta talk. Greek's like, I heard there's Greek food. <laughs> yeah, Eric, so that's why I said it, because you're in here. So he's done a ton of like custom biker gear. I There might be a section on the site. Let me see. Let me see if I can guide you. Shop. Or at least I know that he did it before. Maker and crafts person. I don't know. It's not letting me follow through here. But yeah, the best thing to do, I think, if you can't find that on the site, Eric, is just give them a message. And be like, Kate told me this. And they'll answer for sure. Okay, thanks for posting that bong. So first things first today, let's marinate the tuna so that it has time to sit with all of the flavors while we prep the Greek salad. And then we'll carry on. And then the tuna is just a very, very quick syrup on the stove top, maybe five minutes. Cause like I said, we're serving it raw, but it will be, have that nice little line of sear on the outside just to kind of keep everything together. You're not into orzo Greek? I like it cold only. I'm just gonna let dog go out. So yeah, I like orzo mainly with just this purpose. 
It's like a Mediterranean pasta salad. But yeah, I don't really love orzo in soups or even warm. I just find it's a little bit too soft almost. Search and Rescue does aprons for how to drink. Yeah, they have some insane sponsorships, Flower. They also, when Game of Thrones was huge, and what, Game of Thrones partnered with a alcohol, uh, right? Johnny Walker. Yeah, Johnny Walker. So when they partnered with Johnny Walker for this special whiskey, right? Yeah, they did it for the... They did their custom aprons for that too. Yeah, you can pick all different types of canvas, Eric, and even leather you can add to anything you want. Super cool. And then they also got a bunch of new like hardware, so you can literally go black on black, which I kind of wish I did for this, but I literally was a week ahead. <laughs> Your side gig liquor store sold some of it. And some of the beers too, very cool. Thanks for sharing, Presto. Okay, let's get into it. As always, a nice quick and easy Sunday. And then we can go chill the rest of the day. Oh, you know what I didn't do yet is go get some turnips and AC, or at least check it out. It's not too late. Okay, marinate tuna, and then for the salad, I'll just put underneath cook orzo and orzo is a pasta like i keep saying so it's not rice it is from wheat and we'll do our cuke tom i thought putting some chopped spinach would add some nice color because i don't have any pepper oreo pasta salad yeah okay kate i'm in <laughs> thanks williams yeah it is the new thing don't make me go there your turnip prices are garbage though? Okay, I gotta go check it out. And then olive. And then I think we'll just do a mix up of like a red wine sort of vinaigrette to go on the pasta salad as I have some leftover homemade Greek stuff in this bottle that I think we should just add to. So this was a blender Greek vinaigrette, but yeah, we'll just shake everything into here and then I can use the rest of that up because it's super tasty. But that can stay in the fridge for now. And yes, I do recommend if you make Greek salad dressing, put anchovies into it. It'll just give that extra umami and it doesn't taste like fish. Okay, so bottom of the list, dressing, and then obviously grill tuna and slice. Super duper easy. 40 bells, whoa. Okay, let's check this out. Good thing this is food related. Guys, we gotta go check out the turnips. Okay, that's gonna load for a bit anyways. I'm gonna go grab the tuna. Tuna. September 28th is the date that we got all of this delicious stuff. And yeah, I just pulled out this one piece of loin. It's more than enough for the two of us. This tuna is quite filling. It's also a fatty fish, so it's satiating as well. It'll help you feel full for longer. Feels good. Feels good. No news to speak of, Isabel says. Man, they're still going with the chopper. Like for what, the past week or is it two weeks now? They've been moving something from our town, like way up island with a helicopter instead of using trucks because the, the traffic's just so messed up right now. So it's just like back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Where is Turnip Lady gonna be? This is always the hardest part. Usually I find that she's like up pretty far. Here, do you guys wanna watch? It'll be a bit upside down. Flip the camera. I 
think she, usually she's up here though. At least that's where she was last time. Oh, I think I see her. Could be someone else. Nope, I knew it. I got that feeling. Daisy May. Okay, what's, what's it gonna be? 98 bells each. Okay, last time I bought them at 94 and I got skunked. <sighs> I don't think I'm gonna do it. Do you think that's just me being too wary? That is good? What? 98? No. No. Usually if you go under 90, it's good, right? Okay, so good thing we checked that out. That is high, yeah. Okay, let's get into this. So I'm just gonna leave the tuna in this package when we marinate it, vacuum seal it back up. And that also fast tracks the marinade. So if we leave it for an hour, well, it's actually a two hour marinade. Kind of cool, right? So let's open this up and then whatever extra juices are around the tuna, let's just drain those out as well. Yeah, buy low, sell high. Every time you tried to play the stock market, you'd get burned, right, Bonk? It's the same way why I don't gamble. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's like it's not worth the heartache. So who in chat likes tuna the way I'm gonna prepare it today just seared lightly on the outside and then sliced and served pretty much raw we can say Do you guys like raw tuna or are you more of like a canned tuna person yeah tataki counts it's the only way you like it nice I'm happy to hear that because I feel like a lot of older people, so like my parents' age, don't love raw tuna because they probably just grew up on the canned version, right? I'm just gonna wipe that top of the bag so it doesn't mess up when we go to seal it. And then the only other thing I'll do is let's just give it a flip over so we don't mess up where we want to reseal it. Yeah, that's so oily feeling already. You'll eat it sashimi or nigiri, no issues. Oh, and then who? So now that I know a bunch of you love tuna that way, who's ever had toro, the tuna belly? That's my jam. That is so heckin' good. Okay, I think we'll put some of the Meyer lemon oil in with that. And I don't know if I wanna do any lemon zest. Oh. I just found, or I saw in here, marinated artichoke hearts. We can put that in the salad for sure. Okay, so we're do some of this oil. I'll grab some oregano, cause that'll be really yummy as well. And then maybe I'm gonna take a moment here. Take a moment. And hi, hi, Orca. Yeah, the most expensive part. Toro is so good. And hi, Minuteman. Google tuna line went down an internet rabbit hole. Welcome back. <laughs> yes, thanks for the update as well, Swilliams. Your brisket was unbelievable. So good to hear. Fall apart tender, so much flavor. Possibly the best you've ever had. Doesn't that feel good though? It's like when you're able to make something that delicious, and you can say it's like literally the best you've ever had. Pretty impressive, dude. Sesame crusted with wasabi mayo, Chinese mustard. So, so good, Eric. Yes, I am so into the sesame crusted. We've done that before on stream too. You're new to tuna. So far, you've not had any you haven't liked, Minute Man. Well, that's good. Have you had it raw and cooked? Yummy, yeah, that sounds great, guys. You were doubting yourself the whole time, Swilliams. Tsk, tsk. That means you're still working on building your confidence and that's okay. Trust me, I think like the first three years that we cooked on the egg, it's just like we have no idea what we're doing, but hopefully it turns out. <laughs> and here we are. 
still learning literally every single time. Like every cook is so different. That's why yeah, you just can't doubt yourself. You gotta know that it'll work out. Okay. I don't know if I found the right article I wanted to read. I think so. Just wanted to read up a little bit on Mediterranean food. Peanut butter jelly sandwich beers? What? Oh yeah, also the beers you posted, Eric, look delicious. So, so, so delicious. Peanut butter sandwich beers? What? That's amazing. A rare occasion when Bonk eats avocado with the tuna ponzu? Oh. Love to hear it, Bonk. Tuna <laughs> on a cedar board, nice one. Okay, so Mediterranean cuisine. The food and preparation, or food methods of preparation, used by the people of the Mediterranean basin. So everything that surrounds the Mediterranean Sea can be considered Mediterranean cuisine. So we have Portugal on the outside, right? Then Spain, France, Italy, Greece, Turkey, Syria, a little bit of Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. So all of those countries, cuisines are kind of grouped together if you want to create Mediterranean cuisine. So we know that of all those countries, there's so many different flavors that can go into whatever we make and to call it Mediterranean, right? But there are three core elements of the cuisine. So it's olive, wheat, and grapes, which we yield olive oil, bread and pasta, and then wine and vinegar from the grapes. So those are the three really important components if you wanna make proper Mediterranean cuisine. So we have our olive oil today. I even took it a step further and it's lemon infused. We're doing our orzo pasta and then we'll be using a red wine vinaigrette for the salad. So we hit all of the three things that we needed to hit and now everything else is just a bonus, it's extra. Yeah, they share similar uses of spices just due to the trading, exactly. And hi, hi, Jen. Good morning to you and waffles. I hope you guys are doing good. So the historical connections of the region, I'm just gonna turn this down a bit, the music, as well as the impact of the Mediterranean Sea on the climate and economy mean that these cuisines share dishes beyond the core trio of oil, bread, and wine, such as roasted lamb, meat stews with vegetables and tomato, so Spanish influence there, vegetable stews with influence from Spain and Italy, and then the salted cured fish roe, batarga, which is found across the region. And then, so that salted and cured fish roe, it's basically kept in its little sack. You salt it, it gets dry, and then you can grate it over stuff as sort of a sulky little finishing thing. Very interesting and probably more umami flavor than anything because of the salt and fish. So batarga, very interesting. And then spirits based on anise, so fennel, are drunk in many countries around the Mediterranean. Good thing we got no ouzo in here today. They say, the cooking of the area is not to be confused with the Mediterranean diet made popular because of the apparent health benefits of a diet rich in olive oil, wheat, other grains, fruit and veggies, and a certain amount of seafood, but it's low in meat and dairy products. Mediterranean cuisine encompasses the ways that these and other ingredients, including meat, are dealt with in the kitchen, whether they are health giving or not. Okay, so the ingredients of Mediterranean cuisine are to an extent different from those of the cuisine of Northern Europe, so they use olive oil instead of butter, wine instead of beer, 
And then the list of available ingredients has changed over the centuries. One of the major change was the introduction of many foods by the Arabs to Portugal, Spain, and Sicily in the Middle Ages. Those foods included eggplant, spinach, sugarcane, rice, apricots, and citrus. Very interesting, very interesting. And then another major change was the uh, arrival of foods from the Americas in early modern times, so around the 16th century, notably the incorporation of the potato. So we know that in Greece, they're like huge on making French fries, but that's come from America. That wasn't always the Mediterranean cuisine, right? So it's just been combined by all of these other countries and yeah, one of my favorite cuisines to cook because there's just so many things you can do. Definitely like drinking the beer more than you like to cook with it, <laughs> yes. Okay, I think that's all we need to read up on. That was good. That, that, that. Do I want to do anything else in here? I think I'll keep the tuna relatively simple. And then I also pulled out as like maybe a little garnish or dipping sauce is I had a can of sun-dried tomatoes. Like even just a little dollop of that on the plate to just dip your tuna in, I think would be good. Definitely go together well. Let's get into it though. I'm also going to put my hair back now. And hi Katniss, thank you for the lurk. The potato changed the world. Can kind of say that, can't we, Skookum? Potato's a pretty amazing ingredient. Batarga is super salty. Yeah, that's why it's usually just a garnish, right? Potato, tomato, and corn. Probably that trio bonk. Just thinking about how those things made their way around the world. Two more to 420. Oh, Sammy says... If we can get to 420 subscribers on YouTube, that would make him very happy. 420! <laughs> but hey, well now that we're past the 400 mark, that's very exciting. Oh, falafel, so heckin' good. Yeah, 420 blaze it. Exactly, Bonk, you know the deal. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little sprinkle of our dried oregano. Don't need much. We can put more into the dressing too. Let's do a teaspoon. Just gonna kind of open this up and sprinkle it. And then once we have everything in here, we'll give it a little massage. -y. There's that. We can season the tuna before we grill it rather than putting any salt or pepper into the bag. Go for a pour of this fancy oil. And then that should help coat the tuna and make the grilling process really nice. We did it. Oh no, we did it. <laughs> Thanks guys. 420 subscribers on YouTube. That was easy. That's what Sammy does for you. <laughs> I did not know that, Lily. Tomatoes were thought to be poisonous. If only we could go back and like know how that experience was. Oh no, did you break it? Like imagine having that experience, being some of the first people to just eat a tomato. Yeah, the nightshade family. Yeah, what do you win, oof, Mark? <laughs> good one, Eric. That's a good emote. We did it, chat. Okay, what else am I feeling in here? Sam? It's fine. <laughs> Not in the kitchen, please. Shake my head. Okay, I'm just uh, exploring my cabinet one bit further before I'm like, you know what? The oregano, the infused olive oil, probably more, more than enough of what we need to flavor this up. 
Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, I'm gonna get the sealer. What about some of the brine from the the artichoke heart? I think I'm gonna sneak some of that into there because that's also like infused with flavor. That should be the last thing I put in. <laughs> you had smoked tuna for dinner yesterday. Did you do that yourself? So look at that, super flavorful. What did they say? Did they say what's in here? Oil, vinegar, salt, and spices. I'm in. I'm just gonna do a little pour. And sound effects are always helpful. All right, now we can flip this up. And then like I said, we'll just give it maybe a little massage with the liquids. Careful, because tuna is quite soft and buttery. So don't mess up the meats. Give it a little flip. Oh, nice. How do you find a friend like that? <laughs> Yeah, that's why I said it, Bonk. I was like, Sam. It's just so he knew. Whoa. Seal it up. I just took most of the air out of there. Most of it, not all of it. <laughs> Thanks for the clip, Eric. Okay, first thing on the list, crossed off. That was hard. And then we're gonna get a pot on for the pasta next. Get a boiling pot and then I'll take out the orzo. Yeah, the name of the clip, like the URL that they come up with. Oh God. We almost went over. <laughs> Just gonna rinse that goodness out. Get the towel. Get the towel. Okay, so I just sucked up a little bit of liquid at the top of the bag, so I just was cleaning that out. But yeah, that looks yummy. This looks good. We'll just pop that in the fridge until it's time to grill. Then we'll give it a little pad off, maybe re-oil it, and then away we go. Looks yummies. We use up the orzo pasta salad. So that's how it looks. Basically a pasta that looks like rice. So gotta just wipe this out. No tuna juices are allowed to be left in the vacuum sealer, nope. And hi, hi FCB, good to see you again today. Hope you are doing well. Oh. Did you hear that back crack? That was a bit aggressive. Felt good though. Okay. I think I'll do this pot. Fresh out of the dishwasher. The other one was a bit small. And hi, Annie. Yeah, gonna be mostly lurking today. I know that you have lots of grading to still do. Don't work yourself too hard. Okay, so let's fill this up with hot water. And then we'll add some salt to it so we have our seasoned pasta pot. What's the correct name of the machine? A vacuum sealer. <laughs> or 
Orca Air Sucker 5000. No, they're known as a vacuum sealer. I don't think there's any other name, right? Okay, that's lots. And then let's add like four good spoonfuls of salt to this. And that way it can season the pasta as it cooks in the water. Make it taste like the sea. We can bring that up. If we use a lid, it'll go quicker. Oh, I did use the big, big pot. Maybe I should have chose the other pot. That's all right. Okay, so how much of this dry orzo should we use what do we say usually three quarters of a cup of dry pasta per person okay so if we do a cup and a half of this for salmon and myself probably give us extras still should i just do two cups then uh, no. or that'll be too much cup and a half cup and a half of the orzo <laughs> the vacuum cleaner, yeah. Food Saver is a popular brand name. You can pick them up at Costco. Yeah, the food stealer. <laughs> and the one we use is a Nova because we use it in conjunction with the sous vide. There we go. So everyone has that in their mind when you don't know how much pasta to cook for everyone. Three quarters of a cup of dry per serving and that will give you more than enough. So we're just gonna wait for that water to come up. And then orzo cook time is pretty low, right? Because the pasta is quite small. So maybe six minutes. And we want this nice al dente, so don't overcook it. We don't want it falling apart. And then once it is cooked, we will just line a sheet pan with parchment, pour it onto there, toss it with some olive oil so it doesn't stick, and that way it'll cool off nice and quick. Because if we leave it all piled on itself, it'll keep kind of steaming and cooking. And then it could go mush. No mush. Yeah, no mush zone. And yeah, this is inspired, this salad today is inspired by something my mom used to make all the time. So very, very similar to what we're doing, but she typically did bow tie, bow tie pasta and mixed in all the goodness. And yeah, bonus points if you make your own dressing. Thank you, FCB, for those thousand biddies. That is much appreciated going towards our food truck fund. Oh, we even evened up the number. Very satisfying indeed. <laughs> okay, cook orzo. I think we can just cross that off for ourselves. So I'll grab cucumber, tomato, spinach out. I think we'll dice up some olives too. Yeah, OCD, very satisfied. <laughs> and then I'm going to grab the grill pan out. I feel like I have to season it. Oh no, it's actually not bad. I just have to give the bottom a wipe. You know how it is if you store stuff in the bottom bottom part of your stove sometimes there's little crummies that fall through I'll just give that a rinse out all I keep underneath in this drawer though is our two grill pans and then the glass Pyrex container so this is how this looks thank you anonymous cheer for the one so I'll just rinse those crumbs out but yeah it's all nice and seasoned up still good to go Get that 
not ready for us there. Okay, and then I was also gonna say, if I do command grill pan, my wonderful people, if you wanna pick up one of those grill pans for yourself, say you don't have a grill where you live. This is basically the next best thing. If we go over, this is how it looks. And yeah, I linked one from Lodge there that was pretty inexpensive. And I like this one because the grill grates are quite thin. So it's really good for fish. And then Lodge does have a bigger one that doesn't have the rimmed sides. And then those grill grates are a bit thicker. But yeah, for $16, you can't really beat it. Don't you dare. It's CDO. <laughs> oh no, Katniss. She went there. But yeah, let's come on over. We'll chop up our veggies. Sammy picked up some really nice multicolored tomatoes for this. Look at those. Okay, I'll just peel that off since it's super aggressive on the light. Yeah, I saved him. We got the tomato, we need the cucumber, we need the olives. Got some spinach. Oh no, Minute Man. Thank you for the 502 bitties. Says odd numbers only, please. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess the anonymous cheer threw off the, the counter, right? You sneakers. Oh, very low amount of olives today too. We really should have just canceled stream. No feta, barely any olives. I don't know what kind of household this is anymore. Oh no, Sammy. We do have some pasture villanos, but we don't have a cherry pitter anymore. It broke. I threw it out. You threw it out? I did, yeah. You didn't want to fix it? I don't think it was able to be fixed anymore. Yeah, it was a bit unfixable. Okay, that's all we need for now. I'll use the new spinach. Choo choo! JK is already choo choo and we're not even there yet. Oh, I gotta go grab my water. I gotta stay hydrated while I'm getting caffeinated. It's a household in transition. Thanks, Annie. Yeah, you understand. Yeah, are we having a bit fight? <laughs> it was actually my fault, Orca. Yeah, it was totally my fault that we ran out of feta. I could have saved a bit from yesterday. Should we do equal amounts, four of each tomato? That seems good. And then we'll wash them up before we chop them. Let's get a salad bowl out to mix all of this deliciousness together. Nope, didn't get it started this time. Not this time, friends. Just gonna put my towel there to dry off the tomatoes. I'm sending this stream to the Greek embassy in Canada. Yeah, that'll show you. We're banned. Instant ban. Can't call it Greek salad if there's no feta. That's why, we, that's why I said Mediterranean. <laughs> we got the olive, we got the wheat, and we got the grape. No one said anything about feta cheese. That's just bonus. And hi, Stuzer. How are you doing? Or Stewart? Go right in half and then peel it up. 
And yeah, that's the recipe for today, FCB. Found a really good orzo pasta salad recipe that is similar to what we're gonna make today. So I thought I would post that up for some inspiration. We're going blue bull. Not even risking it. We've come too far. Okay, ready? All I'm gonna do to get this a little bit more fine is just go in half again lengthwise because I really like little cucumber triangles and stuff. And we'll just come back across and do what, like a third inch thick slice, quarter inch. Pop that in the bowl. So who's made a, a Mediterranean style pasta salad before or have you eaten one? That maybe is a better question. I don't think we have to cut that out. It's quite delicate, it doesn't look too hard. So let's just start by going in half. You've made a few, Eric. One of the best pasta salads you can make. <laughs> it just needs feta, dude. <laughs> Please. Please don't do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in half that way, and then I think I just chop this in half like that. So you get a nice, nice bit of tomato. Nice chunk. Gonna be very colorful as well. Just keep going. And yeah, I cut the tomatoes facing up so I can keep all the juices and stuff inside and the pulp doesn't just go onto the cutting board. Guys, Sammy's figuring out the, the hype train, trying to put it back together. And that can go right into the bowl. Very nice tomatoes, holy smokes. Those look so yummy. You actually considered picking up two tins of feta with a handy bucket. Then realize I already picked up crisps, nuts, and other noms. Well, feta would have been delicious with all of the other noms though. I wonder if Sam's heard that before. The Dutch call, or the Germans call the Dutch tomato Wasserbomb because they're more of water than flesh. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, this is where we're at so far. We're still waiting on the pot to boil the pasta. So we got our Kalamata olives floating in there. There's not many, like I said. So I'm just gonna empty all of the brine out and then we'll slice up the olives. Good morning, White Dove. How are you doing? Yeah, keeping trail mix or at least nuts in the pantry, always a good go-to snack. <laughs> Sad 
hardest day ever. In my head, I just thought to myself, I'm like, oh, so I'm just making a Greek salad like every other restaurant makes them. Boom, just roasted. And hi, Lauren, how are you? Okay, water's boiling. Now it's making a mess. I'm gonna drop this pasta in a moment. You've made it several times, Tika Sella. Ooh, I'll open that one too. And thanks for sharing from Simply Scratch. Yeah, there was so many recipes to choose that were all so similar as well. I was like, I don't know what to do. So I just chose the best one that I thought would be the most delish. Yeah, the pitted olives, be careful. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, White Dove. You're feeling the curse of the second shot. But other than that, you're good. Yeah, we had Madame Rainbow Pants feeling that as well yesterday. But yeah, I hope you get on the mend. I'll send you some love and healing vibes your way. And all is well here. I got nothing to complain about. Okay, I'm gonna drop this pasta. It's Sunday, AKA it's Sammy and I's Friday. We made it through a pretty, actually pretty chill weekend. I will say that it was very fun though. Okay, orzo has been dropped. And so now I need my fine mesh strainer because we can't just strain that with a regular colander. It'll all just go into the sink. Get that handy. And then just some olive oil over there. Perfect. And yeah, Eric was saying careful in the pitted olives because sometimes they still have pits like this one. Seemed. Be careful. And yeah, that can break your tooth. And dentist appointments are super expensive. Yeah, I told you. It's like you knew, dude. That's kind of weird. <laughs> the first one hit you harder, Eric. You had Moderna, you were trash garbage after each one, Katniss. Crazy. Well, we're now registered, so that's exciting. And then all we have to do is wait to receive a text message, literally saying like, okay, now you can go. So that's always good. We're getting there, guys. We are getting there. I think I'll chop up some parsley for this salad as well. Some nice freshness. And what about using a bit of sorrel from the garden? Chop up some sorrel with the spinach. This is like a kitchen sink pasta salad. There's that. Oh no, Lauren. Just woke up, you couldn't sleep earlier. Hopefully you caught up on a bit of it though. I'm gonna give this orzo a stir. Grab some spinach. Oh yeah, I gotta chop up those artichoke hearts as well. drain the liquid from here we'll chop those up those will go really good in here too much good food yeah the brisket kept you up Laura and you probably had the meat sweats just saying <laughs> The brisket kept you up. So I just chop up the artichoke hearts, nice bite-sized pieces. Boom, boom, boom. 
your first shot until next month, FCB, because you had COVID and you have to wait three months before you get the shot. Wow. Well, that's coming up soon though, at least, right? Okay, give me a sec, guys. I'm just gonna take a really quick bathroom break. First hour, I made it. Be here, bye. Okay, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, Bonk, you said you're going for like a barbecue steak meal? Is that what you were talking about? Just keeping my eye on this pasta. Mm, maybe two more minutes back there, so don't let me forget. <laughs> Speed. Speed, please. Not today. <laughs> yeah. Don't say it, Katniss. We were talking about that. We were joking earlier. I think I'm just going to do a handful of spinach like that. You could always put brie instead of feta. Oh, goodness. Debris. All about debris. Where's my parsley? Kind of, yep. <laughs> Just some old school shredded cheddar. Imagine. The Mediterranean grandmas would be rolling over in their graves. One more minute on the pasta. It just has a little bit too much bite still. Yeah, out of a Ziploc bag, pre-shredded even. No. Mm -mm. No. No. <laughs> I guess that is true, yeah. They're not here, Kate. They're not gonna say much. They don't have to say much. You feel it, dude. That's the thing. Okay, sounds good, FCB. Don't work too hard, okay? Thank you for those biddies as well if we don't see you again. Pasta complete. I'm just gonna put my strainer in the sink or hold it over there. Got my pot. Big pot in one hand. You're in mod mode. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit different, Orca says. Yum. What should speed cook on the egg tomorrow? It's supposed to be like really nice. Windy, but nice. Oh, we just did a pork shoulder. It was really good. Maybe a pork shoulder. Yeah, no, no. yeah, or I was going to say chimkin. Egg chimkin is always good. Yep. A 
hope Lazy comes in one of these days soon so we can tell him how good his rub was on the pork. His computer is down, apparently. So oh no! He's not been streaming? He's not been streaming or any streams. Dang it! So, uh, yeah. Okay, just come over here for a sec. This is where I'll post the pasta just on top of the bowl. Just gotta scrape a little bit of the orzo out of the pot. No wastage. Bam. I can go away. I think we'll hold on to this spoon. So then the next step, like I said, is just coating the pasta once it's been cooked and strained in a little oil so it doesn't all stick together as it cools. Oh, salmon on the egg is so delicious. That's like one of my favorite things to grill is fish. I feel it really takes on the charcoal flavor. Steamy hot. Pasta. I almost said nudes, but it's not. Would have been good though. Steamy hot nudes. Coming in hot and fresh. Just spread it out so it cools off quicker. That's all the only reason why I do that. So it's not all bunched up and doesn't keep cooking on top of itself. So there is that. And now we're just gonna post that. I'll put it in the back here on the trivets. So it gets good air circulation underneath as well. Good to go. Okay, spinach is gonna be chopped up next. I'm gonna go just snip a little bit of red sorrel from outside. It is a green that is kind of sour. So I think it'll be good in here too. And it has very nice color more than anything, I would say. Lee, you hear those little birdies? So cute. This is the stuff. So this is red leaf sorrel. So you can see the veins. That's how it looks on the back. And it's very sour. Hi, Kiku. Welcome in. And so we'll chop, we'll just do like a little chiffonade, I think, really thin slices, and then sprinkle that in there. And then just a rough chop on the spinach too, to break it down. I think I'll get a smaller bunch here for myself. Smoked lasagna, smoked moussaka, yum. Yeah, Jealous Devil burns so hot. So this is how I'm chopping the spinach for this, keeping everything nice and bite-sized for the salad. Some of the stems we can chop up smaller. Let's grab another bunch. Another veggie that would be good in the salad would be bell pepper chopped up. That's always a, a typical Mediterranean salad ingredient. Whether it's green, red, yellow, orange, whoa. I don't think it matters. Pop that in. And then this one, I'm just gonna cut off the stem end because it's a bit tough. And maybe I'll go down along the center as well. And we'll just come back across like this. Let me see how this is in the... Mm, that'll be good. Not as sour as I thought it was gonna be. Got good fresh flavor too. It's like kind of juicy.
but yeah more than anything I just really love the color contrast even if we mix this give it an initial mix once we add the pasta in there very nice and fresh and healthy and you know it's springtime when Kate starts cooking way more healthy I also need to turn my one light here again there we go this is the place where your cooking skills are going to grow. I 100% think so, Kiku. Yeah, let us know if you have any questions about what we do here. This is an educational focused stream, so we're all here to learn together. And yeah, I don't claim to know everything. don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all <laughs> so this was parsley not cilantro you crazies why am i seeing soap in chat it was only fat leaf parsley it was not cilantro that would be a weird combo in here and thank you speed for gifting the sub to kiku welcome to the kitchen crew kiku it's great to have you happy you found us as well i hope you stick around hardly toasted yet we're good to go guys we're good okay so i think that's all i want to put in here we got the cucumber tomato spinach olive we even got artichoke hearts some sorrel and parsley so let's mix up some dressing next is this your first time on twitch kiko like i seen your account was made like 40 minutes ago you actually like this awesome so my husband sam that's om dog in chat as well kiku He's asking if this is your first time on Twitch. And thank you for the follow. No, no cilantro in orzo pasta salad. Don't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, That's what is making, this bush? Unless you're making a Mexican orzo salad. <laughs> Thanks, Speed. Thank you, my dude, for those kind words. Yeah, we don't claim to know it all, but we just might. <laughs> okay, so we're going to marry up some stuff for the dressing into this bottle that I already had. So this is, do you guys remember, when did we mix this up? We did a Greek day not too long ago, right? What did we make? I'm trying to think. Was it grilled chicken? Grilled pork? Yeah. But anyways, we made this Greek dressing. Yeah, we did a Greek salad. In the blender. Base of it, I think it's in Discord as well. Let me search. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, when we did the pistachio, we did a Greek salad with it. There we go. And yeah, Sammy's Greek salad dressing, so the recipe's already in Discord for us. Do, do, do. Let's see what I put here. So for the dressing, we need red wine vinegar, lemon juice, anchovy fillets, garlic, fresh garlic, dried oregano, feta cheese, olive oil, salt and pepper. And you just blend that all together until it's smooth. So we're gonna do a loose style vinaigrette like that. So we'll grab our red wine vin, maybe a little bit more lemon juice out, some olive oil, we'll mince some garlic into there. That'll be nice and fresh and a bit more dried oregano and then we're good to go. Plus we did the dessert. Was that with the millionaire bars with the toffee chocolate? I don't even know. Don't even know. Okay, we got our oregano, olive oil, red wine vin, some salt and pepper I will also grab for us. 
Lemon. I don't think that was the same day Greek, but it's okay. So it makes me kind of happy <laughs> seeing you guys struggle to remember everything we've made because, yeah, it's really hard for me too. <laughs> I can't remember, Kate. Believe me, I can't either. We watched you make so many delicious things. After years and years, kind of gets all jumbled. Gonna go mow the yard. Oh man. Well, thank you, my dude, for stopping by. Hope you have a good rest of your day, Speed. Take photos of the salmon. Yeah, take photos of your egg stuff that you end up doing. Would love to see it. Okay, open this up. How am I gonna juice into here? A funnel. Got a break to go fold laundry? The worst. <laughs> Half a lemon juice, is that gonna be enough? I think so. I think so, and then the rest of the acid will leave with the red wine vin, but this lemon just looks so good too. Very perfect. Cedar plank Asian salmon on the egg. We've never done cedar planks on the egg, so let us know how it goes. You know, that's fair, Kiku. That's so fair. Yeah, maybe I'm a pretty good cook, but I probably don't cook better than people's grandmas. And it's kind of hard to be able to do that when I've only been alive for 30 years. So I'll get there eventually. <laughs> and cryotg, thank you for that follow. Okay, we can take the funnel out for a moment here. Just gonna do a teaspoon of oregano into the bottle. In 30 years, you'll be calling me grandma. 60 year old Kate on Twitch. I can see it. Yeah, what's gonna happen to like all of us streamers right now that are like either late, mid late 20s, mid late 30s, right? It's like gonna be funny to see where we all end up years down the road. Gonna grow old streaming. I think so. I think so. Why not? Granny Kate, literally. <laughs> I already have some gray hairs starting, so we're we're on the way to there. Yeah, I wonder what Twitch is gonna be in 30 years. That's the thing, Orca. Crazy to think about that. Okay, gonna add some red wine vin to this. I think that was lots. And I just wanna show you what I can see from my angle. So I like to do my vinaigrettes in clear bottles or containers just so we can see where the vinegar and oil line is, right? So that's mostly just acid now. You see the line of lemon juice underneath the red wine vin. Now we'll add oil to balance out that flavor. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks for popping by. So Cryo G started watching when we were on the front page. Unfortunately, could not remember the name of the stream. And then you found us again. Welcome back. Yeah, so happy you found us. And let us know if you have any questions about what's going down today. You know, an Australian man who's 68, Lauren, plays Fortnite with his wife and has a face cam. So cool. Must be a legend. Yes, head wounds. You got to get the balance right or you're going to have a vina regret. <laughs> Whoa! Finale live with a 292 person raid. Good thing we got mostly everything out of the fridge. Otherwise, we would be wrecked. Welcome in. 
Welcome in, friends. How was your stream today? And what did you get up to? Currently, we are working on making a Mediterranean salad dressing for our orzo pasta salad. And then we're gonna be grilling up our tuna momentarily and putting this all together. Cook you something yummy. There's always something yummy going down here. So no scare there, Panzerzilla, and welcome in. Hi, Deli, good to see you as well. We got fish boots, hello, hello. <laughs> Misha's saying, yeah, sorry, friends, there's no feta in today's stream, so please don't freak out. Thanks for the follow, fish boots. Hello, packet pilot. Hope everyone's doing good today. And yeah, everyone new here, so I'm Kate, this is my kitchen, welcome in, welcome to the kitchen crew. I've been streaming on Twitch for three and a half years now, and we're all about cooking tasty, delicious things. Our slogan is spread the deliciousness, and I'm also a professional trained chef, so 10 plus years working in restaurants, and now what I do full time is teach other people how to cook from my home. Perfect for COVID. Thanks for the follow, Packet Pilot. Okay, let's get into it. So, so far in the bottle, we're kind of marrying up our new dressing with a dressing we made last week, same style, is we got lemon juice, red wine vinegar, and some dried oregano, and now we're going to balance out the acid with fat, so olive oil. So that's plain extra virgin, and then I also had some infused olive oil. So Meyer lemon, bay leaf, and peppercorn. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there, and then we'll save some for garnish too. And also, I've not really tasted it yet. Oh, that's good. Super nice light lemon flavor. Doesn't taste fake either. Lovely, we won't do too much of that so we can keep things balanced. I'm happy I decided to try that out today. Yeah, it is recommended that you bring a snack when you come watch the stream. So pro tip there for all of you, let's do a pinch of pepper and a pinch of salt and then we'll shake this up, see how we did. Palia Zeed, thanks for the follow. Do like half a teaspoon of salt in there. And we'll close it up and give it a shake. And hi, hi, Titan. How's the Sunday? Seems pretty loose. I'll give it a taste, see what I think, but it might need a bit more fat is just how I'm feeling with the mixture. But it mixed up really nice. Yeah, we're, uh, the food talks that happen here, Greek, endless. And yeah, so far so good here, Titan. Everything's just rolling right along. The only sad part about today is there's no feta for the salad. <laughs> yeah, Annie, if you have a Bloody Mary on Sunday, do you say Sunday, Bloody Sunday? I believe so. Okay, let's just pour a bit of this out so I can taste it. Looks yummy. Whoa, it's a bit acidic. Not too bad though. Just need a bit more olive oil and then we'll be good. And that's a telltale sign that your food is not seasoned properly. Is when you get like an overwhelming flavor on your palate that literally makes you go, whoa, like that's a bit much. And it's like, okay, what do I have to add into here to make it not be like that? Yeah, we almost actually canceled the stream today, Titan. We were questioning it. It's like no feta for the salad, probably should just cancel. <laughs> okay, let's have one more taste. Just grab a small spoon. And then I think we're good. We'll check the orzo and then we can mix this up. Because it should marinate for a little bit of time together before you eat it. That's way better. 
I also like to make this dressing for the salad a bit more potent because I've not seasoned any of the vegetables. I mean, you have quite a bit of veggies going into it. We were thinking ahead. So this is the bowl. It's so far we have diced up cucumber, tomato, we did chopped spinach, sliced olive, artichoke heart, and some parsley. And then just moments earlier, we cooked off some orzo pasta, a few moments in boiling water, and now it's cooled off and we can mix everything together. So I laid it out on parchment because it's really easy to take it off of the sheet pan once it's cooled off. So you just gather up each corner, kind of like a taco, and then just slide out all of the pasta into the bowl. Like that. Yeah, cheese riot. Please, flour, no. You dominated half a bag of cheese curds yesterday, Titan? <laughs> Oh goodness. It's kind of hard not to though, right? Need the slaw? You're scared to ask about the slaw? Why, Annie? Okay, so I'm gonna pour some of this over. A little bit to start. And now we're gonna start mixing it up. more because that's the thing is the pasta is going to keep soaking up the dressing yummy though that looks really good get everything nicely coated and that can just hang out in the fridge while we finish off the tuna <laughs> that's how easy that is I'm gonna give this a little taste too before I put it away, just to see where our starting point is for flavor. Whether I gotta add a bit of salt now to season it through. Yeah, it wasn't the white slaw, she got the red slaw. Hope it tasted better than it looked. Wait, did she post a photo? of her brisket yesterday? I don't think she did. That was blondie. I might have missed it though. No, she didn't, that's fair. Space and out, yeah, the colored cabbage. <laughs> okay, I'm going for a bite. Let's get kind of a bit of everything on the spoonful to start. No, we didn't put in the dressing, garlic. We need garlic and we need salt is what we're missing here. Grab this first. I'll grab some garlic. Just mince it in using a garlic press and give it a toss. That nice raw flavor will distribute pretty well, I think. How could we forget the garlic chat? The whole no feta thing is just throwing me right off. And hi, Izzy Rogue. Yeah, it's tasty and healthy. Kind of the only pasta salad I make. Okay, I'm thinking two cloves of garlic for this since it's raw. I don't want it to be like so spicy on the palate, right? So we smash it, 
to make it easier to peel. You see how it opens up the skin? Yeah, perfect cooked orzo with nice, crispy, juicy veg. One of my faves. And I will keep saying it's a very good meal prep item. So make a big batch one day of the week and then you can eat from it for like up to five days, I would say. Yeah, I would eat it for breakfast, for sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, Sam, had to wash my beard after last night's dinner. The pork and the slaw juices, insane. You know what else I think the, the pasta salad needs is a little bit of lemon zest. Just lacking in some bright flavor. So we'll do one more little sprinkle of salt around as well. We'll do our lemon zest and then give that a stir. So we added salt, garlic, lemon zest. And yeah, so Sammy posted the clip there from our raid yesterday to Anel, a music artist on Twitch. And her sing through of our menu that we cooked yesterday is epic. All right, one teaspoon of lemon zest, more than enough. Tap that out. It was so good, yeah. It was very enjoyable. It's like that seriously made my night last night. I didn't... I didn't ask her to do those things, but like as a streamer, it's like she knows exactly what she's doing. It's very entertaining. So happy that we shared the raid with her. And yeah, there's no really extra sopping dressing down there. So that is kind of a sign that we could add more if we wanted. But let's see how it is after this next mix up flavor rendition. I'm trying to make sure that I really distribute that minced garlic evenly so you don't just get like a clump of it in a bite. All right, let's see. I'm gonna leave the olive out. A hundred times better. hundred times better. I'm gonna add just a bit more salt still. Little drizzle of that. And then that's money. I taste the garlic, I taste the lemon. The little bit of oregano. And then like all, all of the different veggies and the olives in there. It's a fun one to eat makes you think it's like what is all this goodness whoa flying orzo okay so that's gonna go in the fridge and i'll grab the tuna out that's our next step yeah i'm so glad bonk that you copy and pasted our menu yesterday in chat couldn't have been more perfect Oh gosh, I'm sorry. It's a terrifying sound, really. Me putting the bowl on the foil pork. <laughs> Who just had a shiver? <laughs> and I will say that, Annie. Yeah, the food and music connection is quite strong on Twitch. We are all a little bit intertwined. 
Yeah, everyone in chat was just hungry. It's true. Okay, so salad crossed off. That's just marinating. And now it's time to grill and slice the tuna. We are there. So I got my salt here ready to go. Let's get a plate to put the tuna onto. And we'll season it. Get it ready for the grill. So it marinated for one hour with Meyer lemon olive oil, some of the brine from the artichoke hearts, and then just some dried oregano. So if I go big view, this is how the loin is looking. Really, really yummy. We'll open this up, like I said. Maybe give it a little pat off if it needs, but a nice sprinkle of salt. And then we can cook it up. We're going to do it on the grill pan on the stove top, Izzy. And hi, Dust. Just finished a bunch of yard work. It feels good. Yeah, Speed just left to go mow his lawn as well. <laughs> Welcome in. We just finished off the pasta salad dust, but you've not missed the tuna cook yet. So good timing. And this does look really beautiful. I think because we coated it with the oil, I'm not even going to dry it off or anything like that. We'll just give it a sprinkle of the salt. I'll kind of massage the the oregano a bit better around. And then all we do is sear it up on the outside, each side, until it's like about, what, a quarter inch cooked through, I would say. Quarter inch around the outside edge, and that'll just help hold the tuna together for when we go to slice it. If I didn't say it's tuna, it could go for ham. Yeah, maybe the color, hey, Orca? <laughs> and yeah, Dust, we have a ride in chat because there's no feta for the salad and a very small amount of olives, but we're still, we're pushing through for the good of humanity. I don't know if it's for the good, really. Humanity be, might just be like, no, Kate, shouldn't have done it. So a little sprink. Just go on each of these sides. You can always add more salt after, but you can't take it away. Mildly rioting mods. I mean, there's definitely enough of you in chat. <laughs> yeah, the fish shake. I felt it, Dust. I felt that from afar. Are you sure it's tuna titan? It might be ham, like Orca said. <laughs> you never know. No, this is albacore tuna loin. And it was fresh caught here on the west coast, just up island from our favorite fishing family, or one of them, let's say. So now we have our griddle pan here. I did give it a little rinse earlier, so I'm just gonna turn it on let that dry out and then maybe give it a spritz of some non-stick just to help the tuna not stick at all here i'll grab our spoon holder maybe we'll just post this here really aggressive light bar perfect and then we just need some tongs for flipping over the tuna So pan is on medium high heat. That's all we're really waiting for. So while that's going, I'm gonna put a few things away. <laughs> Flour, no justice, no cheese. A nice sear, if you will. The food dreams are nightmares today. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, on this episode of Food Wishes, Kate wishes she had feta. That's how I'm feeling right now.
I'm too picky with the feta though. I won't settle for cow's feta anymore. I just don't like the flavor of the brands that we get in Canada. So it's gotta be goat feta or nothing. That's it. My standards are too high now. Ban the streamer. <laughs> At least she doesn't use Gagasol Gorgonzola as a replacement. That would be disgusting. I will admit that, Orca. In that salad, don't put Gorgonzola. Please. Okay, little wet spots are now dry, so I'll give this a little spray of just some canola oil. And then basically once it's smoking, we know that the fish is good to go. You could also just like rub some oil on the grill grates too. We got options. Yum, this is gonna be so good. Okay, I'm gonna get the plate out that I want for this. We're almost there. We got our one garnish of the Meyer lemon olive oil, a nice drizzle. And then I also have this can of sun-dried tomato that I think a little dollop on the plate would be so nice. We'll do that. And then I just need a cutting board for the tuna once it comes off. I'll slice it up. And maybe even when the tuna first comes off of the grill, we'll quickly pop it in the freezer just to re-firm up that outside. And that way we'll get a nice clean slice. Get my slicing knife ready as well. And that is it for the list today. So I don't lie when I say quick and easy Sunday. But I do lie when I say there's a Greek salad. <laughs> Madame Rainbow Pants, thank you for the raid. How is your Sunday going? Yeah, Gouda the plastic cheese. Your mom bought half a wheel of Gouda Orca and it was gone in 10 days. Whew, stinky household. Cutting the cheese for sure. Yeah, imagine just having a casual wheel of Gouda in your house. Okay, we're almost there, chat. Yeah, four people crushed it. Oh, I know you're Dutch, Orca. No, Gouda's not stinky, but what if you get the toots after you eat cheese? Then that gets a bit stinky. Gotta think about what happens after. Okay, so here's the thing about cast iron. It might take a little bit to heat it up, but then once it is hot, it keeps that heat for a long period of time. So yeah, it might take a bit to heat up, but once it is hot, it'll stay hot for a while. And it is one of my favorite pieces of cooking equipment to use on an electric stove top is cast iron pans. Oh man. Madame's in recovery mode from the all night fever. Still sending you love and healing vibes. We've been sending them all over the world today. But yeah, hope you get on the mend quickly, Madame. And thanks for stopping by. The cheese toots minute, man. Wait, you don't know about those? Smoked Gouda, that's a good one. What's another one? I've, there's quite a few like different flavored Goudas out there, right? There's a caraway one. I think I've had a dill, a dill infused Gouda, which was really yummy too. Okay, I'm starting to see some smoke here. So I think we're good to go. Just gonna use my hands to initially place it on because I find that tongs are a bit aggressive sometimes. And I'm just gonna go, so if I put it on this one edge, then I can just flip it over to the other side, right? So that's what I'm doing here. We obviously want to hear that sound as well. Just gonna get rid of that dirty plate and come back with a clean one. 
quick wash of the hands. Yeah, that's fair, Orca. Depends where you get the cheese from. Makes sense. Get a Gouda with real bacon in it. It was small batch from someone. Weird, but pretty good. I could see that. Yeah, the crisscross. How did you know, Izzy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people would just go on straight, but we're going diamonds. Okay, that side is getting there. Maybe going to move this just a bit more to the center. I'm starting to see if I look on the one side that it's getting cooked through underneath. Is that an extra little press? I love the sound of the juices too as they start to hit the bottom of the pan. Oh, roasted garlic gouda bonk. That sounds great. And then I always say if you go to flip something on the grill and it's still stuck, that's just the food item telling you that it's not ready to flip over. No stickage here though, so I'm going for it. Ah, we went double flip. Yum, look at how good that's looking. So I'm gonna give it another little press. Definitely don't wanna cook it any longer than that on each side. It is a chunky piece of tuna dust, and I'm so happy to say that I filleted it myself back in September. First experience. Move that side a bit more just to get this edge of the tuna seared up. Okay, ready? Now we're just gonna go back over and flip onto the last side. And then we'll pop that beautiful piece into the freezer. And I will say like grilling fish, it does get pretty smoky inside. So pop a window open for yourself. Thanks, Oof Mark. Hitch lived off of nettle tea for a week on that island. I don't actually recall what he was doing. Okay, there we go, guys. Done and done. I'm not gonna do crisscross because the tuna is gonna get overcooked. But this is how it looks when it's done. Just wanna show that little outside mark, how it got seared up, but the tuna inside is still raw. So now I'm just gonna go over to the freezer quickly with this so it can finish firming up before we slice. Just a few moments, that's all it takes. But it really does make the slicing process easy. So patience, friends. One of the hardest things in cooking is having patience. Oh, I like gr aged cheese. I almost said grilled cheese. I like both, all of the above. I like aged cheese, I like fresh cheese, and yes, I have Izzy. So I've been to Italy on two separate occasions. The first time when I went, I was still in high school and I was in a uh, soccer academy. We were actually talking about this yesterday on stream, so follow up from that. 
in my final year of high school in soccer academy is my teacher, also my full-time soccer coach, so that was cool. He set up for us to all take a trip to Italy, and we stayed in an old-school commune outside of Rome and played soccer with all the Italian kids. Like, we were girls playing against guys, right? Because soccer for girls in Europe is not a huge thing, and we were pretty high-end. So yeah, that was the first time I went, and like the commune we stayed, the family family lived there and we got like all fresh food cooked for us every every hour of the day whatever we would want I almost got sick off of buffalo mozzarella that was the one time where I almost overdid it with cheese because it was so heckin good yeah so like every day after we finished playing soccer we would come home to this like glorious meal of pasta freshly cooked from the family I should have on like I wish that smartphones were more of a thing back then because yeah I can't describe how amazing that experience was like, I was maybe 17 18 years old and then the second time I went to Italy I was I think 23 so like seven years ago now and I went back to Rome and did like a full tour of Italy and I love it there yeah if I could live there I would yeah, cheese, wine, good Italian foods, like old school commune to the point where it was just shutters on the windows. There was no screens, nothing like that. Very, very cool. Yeah, unfortunate. Not really though, I'm still fortunate for the experience. And yeah, the second time I was in Italy, I actually was writing a food blog of my backpacking experience through Europe. So if you guys are interested in reading up on that, I have shared it before. It's on WordPress. It's called And Then She Ate It. <laughs> so good. Okay, all we're waiting for, let's bring out our orzo salad. We'll put that on the plate while we wait for the tuna to cool off. And then away we go. And yeah, I think like my experience traveling around the world really made me appreciate and love food so much. Oh. What is it, Cookie? What is it, Cookie? Huh? Redeemed 100,000 pots and pans points to cook with Sammy, which means I get a day off. Yes. Natural hot chicken, biscuits, and red beans and rice? I'm in. I am so into that. You're gonna watch me screw up biscuits. Nashville hot chicken, <laughs> biscuits, red beans, and rice. Okay, I need to write that down. Otherwise, I'm totally gonna forget because you didn't link it with the redemption. Just copy and paste it to me, Cookie. Copy pasta to the Sama. Oh yeah, that's right, I'm not the chef. If I don't get the ingredients, that's fine. It's not on me. Yeah, so cook with Sammy. Chicken. I already have the chicken. We can do another recipe out of the Maddie book if you want. Yeah, he has got a Nashville hot chicken recipe, doesn't he? Hot chicken fried in the BGE, dead. I'll do the biscuits. I'm so in. I love fried chicken. Yeah, exactly, Izzy. Everyone should vid visit Italy at least once in their lives and experience the real food. It's just unlike any other, I have to say. I don't know if it's just their ingredients are so fresh. I think they just really love the food, though. It's like you can taste the love, right? It is in North America, most food is like, okay, how do we make this as quick as humanly possible? <laughs> it's not always the best. So is Sammy about to cook right now, or is he going to cook it? He's going to cook it in another stream, Jake the Snake. <laughs> yeah, get to work. <laughs> we already do have the chickens in the freezer, so that's good. Yeah, do a food tour of Spain, also a thing I did. It was very hard to leave. Like, it was hard to just stay away from the food markets in Europe. Basically, my budget was food, and that was pretty much it. You've been to Italy three times, Orca? I would go back again any day. Have a real, a real paella valenciana. I did have that as well, Jake, and it's so, so good. Yeah, all the countries I went to, it's like, okay, I have to make sure I eat this, this, this. I just had a food list to check off. We're making this. 
Yeah. Biscuits. On biscuits instead of bread? Yeah. Dead. It's very tough, Bonk. And that's why I say to Sam now, because he does have dual citizenship. It's like, if we ever go back to Europe, we're probably not gonna leave. So we have to plan things accordingly. What's my take on mussels? I love them. I love them, Jake. And you must have not been around. I think it was last week. We did a Thai green curry with fresh mussels and clams. So, so yum. So yeah, either with a curry sort of sauce with them, whether it's red, green, whatever, or just a simple herb, garlic, butter, and white wine sort of steam on them with bread for dipping. Oh, it needs two chickens, perfect. It needs two chickens? Way we go. Yeah, both ways sound delish. They're really good. Three hours plus overnight grind. An overnight brine, easy. Okay. I'm in. Sammy's already getting himself prepped. And thank you for posting that bonk. So yeah, if you wanna know what's going on when we're not on Twitch, our Discord is cooked with Kate after hours. So pop on in there and you'll stay up to date on all of the fun things. Back to the Maddie book. And now, maybe some people that picked up the Maddie book for themselves through our Amazon link. Oh sweet, it's still the one that's up there. You can make the fried chicken with us when we do it, or when Sam does it. I keep saying we, but it doesn't involve me. <laughs> okay, we got our plate here. Our orzo pasta salad has been mixed and marinated for a little bit of time. Pop that on the plate and then we'll get our tuna out. It should be nice and firm so we can slice it clean. Yum. So when we're plating this, make sure to leave enough room to pop the tuna beside. It's basically gonna be like a half and half sort of plate. Oh man, of course that cucumber would have to fall. Okay, there's that. Mmm, you missed the tuna cooking. It did not take us long, so it was probably easy to miss today, presto. It wasn't even in the pan for five minutes, I think. <laughs> yeah, if only there was some feta to sprinkle over that. Oof, Maroon. Oh, I guess I could have pulled the goat cheese out of the freezer. That would have been maybe the other option I would have went. But here's our tuna, nice and firmed up. So we seared up on our little grill pan inside. On each side, watching as we did that to make sure that we weren't cooking the tuna loin through the middle. So maybe 30 seconds aside, that's it. Yeah, I like doing the cook with Sammy on Sundays. I wonder if I cook for you while you're playing yeah, that's the other option I was thinking as well, is like while Sam cooks, I could also play Lego during that time or get a start on it. We'll see, right? We'll see. Okay, away we go. Just looking at this, what side I wanna slice. I don't think it really matters, but then all I kinda do as I slice it, so I hold the tuna on this side. And thank you Midnight Orchid for hosting the stream, welcome in because this side is a little bit soft and I feel that sometimes when I slice it likes to flake. So hold the top and the side and then we just use our index finger to guide where we wanna slice and aim for about a quarter inch thick slices. How was your stream today? Did everything go good? Kate cook with Lego, Sammy grills some menu. <laughs> yeah, okay. So when we cut or slice fish, we wanna go with nice, even 
movements on the knife. Not pressing down, because fish is so delicate. And if you're really, really good, like sushi chefs, they can do this in one go. Just one slice and you're good. Like the one motion, so either forward or backwards. But you saw I kind of went a couple times. I'm just doing it because this is so delicate. Nice chill stream. Oh, you were cross-stitching? What are you creating? Both myself and Sam have cross-stitching skills. Maybe we should make that a little redemption. A Sam and Kate cross-stitch and we'll send them out. So cute. I loved cross-stitching when I was young and Sam did some cross-stitches of like airplanes and helicopters when he was young. Very cool. And yeah, thanks, Cookie. The cook on this looks beautiful, hey? That's why I said you're only looking for about a quarter inch cooked through on the outside and the rest should be raw. Cool, a Ravenclaw house crest. How fitting. We just took the Harry Potter sorting hat quiz yesterday while we were waiting for the pulled pork. Everyone thought I was gonna end up mainly Ravenclaw, but what did I end up, Hufflepuff? Gryffindor! I think I ended up Hufflepuff or something. No. Was it Gryffindor? 40, like 44%. Oh, okay. Thanks for remembering. Yep. What did you Okay, so see how the outside pieces of the tuna wanna always flake off? That's just how it is. I'm gonna do one more slice and then that's lots for me. Is because tuna is so fatty, it's also satiating, which makes you feel full. Here we go. Yeah, there's a an inside view. Mmm. Look at those flakes. Yeah, you saw the Harry Potter Legos? Nice. I'm glad that you were there to experience it all. You're a self-identified Hufflepuff, but sorted into Gryffindor, which actually now I identify as a Gryffindor. <laughs> I'd love to hear it, madame. Okay, so now gently pick this up. I'm gonna try and keep it fanned out. So I'll show you how to do that on the plate. Just move this over so you can see my transferring. And yeah, I'll do it this way. Maybe I'll turn it the other way. I don't know why, but I want it to be this way on the plate. I don't know why, chat. Okay, how am I gonna do this? I might just go one at a time, actually. So start with that one. Place it there. We want to show off that beautiful tuna. And you can see just how delicate it is. Whoa, that part almost just broke off. is how I wanted it. Just doing a quick rinse of the hand. Indubitably. <laughs> so many raven clawers in here. Okay, so first little condiment that we're gonna place, I think right here is gonna be the nice spot, is just a, a dollop of our sun-dried tomato pesto. I'll give it a taste as well, just to see what we're working with. But I thought that would be a nice little condiment to have to pull from. Mmm, yeah, it's like sun-dried tomato literally mixed with pesto. Pop that there. Leave that spoon out for Sammy. Pesto Rasa. And it says on the container that it's inspired by Sicily, or sorry, Sardinian. Sardinia, pesto di Sardinia. Yum. Okay, and now to bring everything together, 
I'm gonna do a drizzle of our Meyer lemon infused olive oil. <laughs> yeah, you feel like you're in shock seeing a classical item on the stream. <laughs> we gotta humble ourselves every now and then, madame. And hi, Mr. Mailman. So I'm gonna pour some of the oil, basically just like around the outer parts of the plate. I like how it made the oils kind of move with the tomato stuff. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that looks really, really good. And then Sam, do you think I should just do a bit of flake salt over the tuna to season it? I mean, Bonk, do you think a small sprinkle of flake salt? <laughs> As I say it, Bonk types it. These are my people. Yeah, all I did for that oil cookie, so I cooked the olive oil with the Meyer lemon, some bay leaf and peppercorn just quickly on the stove top. And then I just popped it in the freezer in a vacuum sealed bag. And I just broke off a little chunk of it and let it thaw out this morning. That seems like a good distribution of salt. Yeah, he's in the future. That was really weird, but I love it. What a tasty, healthy looking dish. I love all the colors. I think all the flavors are awesome as well. So that's how I would present it to you guys. So I'm just gonna turn it to myself for a photo. And then we get to eat. Oh, thank you, hardly toasted brought someone new into our stream. Hello, Mr. Mailman, welcome in. And thank you Toasted for spreading the deliciousness. I appreciate that. Okay, I gotta get the lighting in here just right. Just because of the glaze on this plate, it really likes to reflect from above and kind of throw off how things look. If I go this way. Got it. Yeah, that looks good. All right. That's for you, chat. Let's get a fork. You should not need a knife for this. The tuna should just fall apart on your fork. Oh, it's raining in Vancouver. We actually got the sun trying to peek out here. Have a wonderful walk, Jen. And yeah, this is totally something that Jen would eat. That's why I cook fish at least once a week on stream. Yeah, that should be the 12 month badge, a red seal. Good one. Another one for the cookbook series I'm writing. That's right, Izzy. And that's why I love to post those menus in Discord because you can literally scroll through years worth and I can always look back and see what we made together. Because like I said, it's kind of hard to remember after all those years of all of the different things we made. But just a quick little search up and away we go. Okay, I'm gonna go for the tuna first. Just spread this out. Try this first piece together and then we'll start trying everything else combined. Mmm. You really get the Meyer lemon olive oil from it. And like a bit of smokiness from it being on the grill pan, which I really like. And then the inside's just like straight butter. A little bit of herbiness from the oregano that it marinated with. <laughs> yeah, you know what this dish could need or take? Some feta. Mm. If only. Mm. 
first time doing Mediterranean tuna and I am into it. Let me get a little bite of this condiment too. So I still have some tuna in my mouth. Mmm. That's really, really good. The sauce, skookum. Yeah. One of the rare times that Kate uses something packaged on stream. So it's just a sun-dried tomato pesto. So pesto de sardinha. Basically sun-dried tomatoes mixed with pesto. So it's like got that good tomato flavor, but it gets sweetened up with a bit of basil in it. I really, really like it. See if there's anything weird in here. So water, sun-dried tomatoes, tomato paste, basil, oil, parmesan and romano cheese, onion, garlic, pel bell pepper, olive oil, salt, red wine vinegar, onion, sugar, rosemary, citric acid. There's nothing weird in there. And that's also why I choose Classico. Out of anything like packaged, read the ingredient list. If you can read everything through, that's kind of a rare thing these days. So tried and true brand. I've never been disappointed by anything that they make. And thank you, Ingrediology. Hi, Logan. Hope you and Maggie are doing well over there. Thanks for popping by. And yeah, let's keep going into this. Let's have a good bite of our orzo pasta salad. Mmm. Really happy I added the garlic into that. <laughs> Everyone's in a riot here today. Watch out. If only the mods could ban the streamer. <laughs> and thank you, Bong, for posting that. So guys, if you've never experienced an ingrediology stream on Twitch, please go give him a follow so you can check him out when he's live. Mmm. A little bite of the artichoke. You know what would just pull this all together? Just some creaminess from some, from some feta cheese, you know? But I think that's all it's really missing. Not that you need it, but it definitely would round it out. Would also be interesting to see how the feta cheese tastes with tuna, right? Banned until Thursday, thanks. <laughs> okay, I'm having another bite. See how the tuna is with the salad. We've not done that route yet. Going for the full scoop. I like how the spinach kind of buffs this all out too. Adds some good crunch. Mmm. Good olive bite. Mmm. That's so good, guys. Sammy, are you gonna have a bite? Or you're good? Yeah. He is? Yeah. Okay. It's ready for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if I don't see feta next week, then I don't know what's happening. I'm taunting them. <laughs> I thought about it, Orca. I was like, if only I could make my own feta really quickly. You can just eat out of this if you want. We'll crush the rest later. I'm very happy with how that all turned out. The pasta is nice al dente. It's not just mush in your mouth. Nice fresh tomatoes, cucumber for juiciness. The vinaigrette I made for the pasta salad is really good too. Nice and light, not too heavy. <laughs> Man, bear pig. Lucky it tastes good. Lucky it tastes good, he says. Otherwise, it's definitely missing feta. There was a place in the UK that was making feta, but they literally had to change the name of the cheese. Feta has to come from Greece. I did not know that, Izzy. Is that like a confirmed thing? Madame has a question. When Sammy takes over the stream, can he cosplay as Kate? 
I don't know if we can shave the beard. <laughs> That's how I sound. <laughs> Too good. We'll, uh, we'll set up the voiceover on the mixer. <laughs> BK voice, but Sammy in person. Yoga pants, a wig, and pink lipstick. That's that's all we need. Apparently, that was my Kate impersonation, or that was his Kate impersonation. Well, excuse me. <laughs> He's got to wear the apron, too. That's an easy one. Put the beard and a ponytail behind his head. We can do a beard blowout to prepare him for the stream. So good. I guess it's good if he literally just crushed it. Did you try it with some of the best though? No. Why, is it scary? Mm. <laughs> Gone in 60 seconds. And now I'm wishing I didn't say, you can just have some of this plate. I'll just make a new plate after stream, it's fine friends. But we know that if Sammy eats it, especially the healthy things, it's good. Yeah, crushed. Clean plate club. Mediterranean tuna loin with orzo pasta salad. Complete. Another great stream had by all. And that was under three hours. Like we're just over the two hour mark here together. Simple, easy Sunday. I can get behind that. Did you get any flavor of the Meyer lemon oil? Mm -hmm. Yeah, super nice. Alka, you like the men's beard? You have almost the same one. <laughs> he definitely went to town. That's why I always make a big bowl of that stuff. Cause yeah, you can just keep munching. Minus 14 minutes for the pre-show. That's true, Bonk. So we are pretty much two hours done and done. Kate's kitchen speed runs. <laughs> Courtesy of most posts. Thank you for that. Yeah, such fun streams this weekend. And that's why we do shorter Sundays. Cause sometimes Saturdays are just a marathon. Like. Yesterday was over or just over 12 hours, but gotta wait for the pork to cook. You can't rush it. Thank you for the follow as well, Falca. Definitely a recipe you could make in the truck. Totally. That's why I said it's good for meal prep because you can make it ahead of time, do a big batch, and the flavor really doesn't suffer as it sits for like four or five days. It almost gets better. And then after the five days, I would say the veggies will start to break down. Same with the pasta, no longer than that. Could have had it done in an hour, totally. Cause that's the thing is it always takes me longer to do stuff cause I'm explaining to you guys the whole way. I don't think it's gonna be a set menu at all dust. I think it'll be basically a menu of the day for the food truck because we plan on being on different area or being at different areas at any given time. So it'll be pretty much what we can get our hands on from farmers and stuff like that. And then we'll just post a menu and go from there. Must include lobster rolls. Of course, when we're on the East Coast, Izzy, of course. Oh, baby, he was so good. This guy threatens to have a banoffee pie for breakfast, but instead eats all of his lunch first. And now you can enjoy it without getting an upset tum tum. Oh. Belch of approval for this chef today. Thanks, Sammy. Locally sourced menu food truck. Exactly, Bonk. Toasted wants me to drink. I can do that. Get a quick rinse. Mm. But no, no strong like after flavor of garlic or anything like that after eating this. It just finishes so clean. I think the lemon really helps with that, hey? Okay, so we're wrapping things up, friends. No, Sammy's not playing, it's true. We got, I'm, I'm viewing, I'm looking for raids. We got Cosmicat, fellow Canadian, German chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
German chocolate cake with Cosmocat. I'm in. She is very good at making cakes, so I would love to see how this turns out. Also supporting fellow food and drink streamer. Back with more beer, Crux. Everyone can calm down now. Also happy to say, Crux, that we are part of the Clean Plate Club now. Okay, I'm gonna set up this raid for us. There we go. Yeah, you're very welcome, Faye. Thanks for stopping by. So hopefully we inspired you guys this weekend. Well, the last four days, let's say. Thursday doesn't count as weekend. To create some delicious food for yourself or someone else too. It's like I always say, sharing is caring. <laughs> this guy. I'm getting distracted by his spoon noises. Uh, everything turned out super, super good this weekend. All of the recipes are posted for you in Discord if you want to make anything up for yourself in the future. And yeah, we'll be back next Thursday. I'll be posting the new menu tomorrow on both Discord and Twitch, so stay tuned for that. And maybe you can cook along with us. Yeah, he had the munchies, exactly. Okay, guys, thanks for all of the love this weekend as well. We had a lot of awesome goals going with the food truck fund and the sub goal too. We're definitely up there, so just thanks everyone. Everyone new that's found us, we appreciate you. Yeah, you're welcome, Supra. I hope you enjoyed lunch, even though you didn't get to taste it today. Soon though, soon. Okay, I'm gonna hit this button, guys. Love you, stay safe wherever you are, and see you Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Bye! Oh no, Annie! Just got back.